Hey there everybody, Don Evans here for Watch Report, and today I have the Raven Airfield in for review. But real quick here, uh, gonna talk a little unscripted, because it's been a weird week, and you know, obviously we do watch reviews here, that's the main objective. And uh, you know, it's uh, everything these days is about creating a brand and, and trying to create something you know, more eyes on the product, if you will, and our product is this YouTube channel and our website and watch reviews. So tried uh, somewhat successfully and somewhat unsuccessfully to get t-shirts done through Teespring, been working on this for a few months and ordered samples and got everything taken care of, got the logo placed properly and everything like that. And uh, my fault kind of jumped the gun once we connected and made a subdomain and got everything set up. And then I started putting links everywhere and, uh, you know, creating the Instagram shop and everything. Well, in the end, it kind of all blew up. There was a problem with the subdomain and DNS and uh, kind of a lot of stuff uh, above my pay grade, if you will, that I don't understand. So now I got to go back and take all that out. And all of that has just... Uh, taken away from me being able to sit and, uh, you know, work on these watch reviews. I've got a lot in hand, a lot going on. So uh, at some point, we will have t-shirts to offer. Uh, like I said, I've worked kind of hard on this. I, I really wanted to create something instead of doing a Patreon or having those Amazon links and having something that you could buy and you could wear and you know, I'm not going to say, oh, it's going to be your new favorite t-shirt, but they're nice premium shirts. I tried to make the shirts clean looking and the logo's nice. You know, we got the new logo done and everything like that. So uh, hopefully at some point uh, it will be available once we do get it all figured out. Thought I had it figured out and I didn't. But uh, now back into, you know, what we do here. That is watch reviews. This is the Raven Airfield. It is a 40 millimeter pilot and field watch so airfield it makes perfect sense the name is easy to remember and it fits the purpose of this watch this is from raven uh, i think everybody knows the raven brand at this point he's been around a long time uh 2011 i think benaris bought into the raven name i, I believe I, I could be wrong in the date but i believe it was somewhere around there and Steve Laughlin has been running Raven uh, for the past, I think, want to say five, six years by himself. Doing a great job. This is another great design. So let's get into the review. Let's get into the rest of the video and talk about this Raven Airfield in this very, very, very cool green apple color. So let's discuss the movement and the price. And right out of the gate, I want to touch on something I have always said, which is no watch over $500 should have a Seiko NH35 movement. Nowadays, though, that seems to be a regular occurrence, as I did a review of an upcoming watch that will release in November. And since then, I have received quite a few more watches with this movement and the price being over $500. In most cases, it's only a little over, nothing crazy, but it seems times they are a changing. and when I see so many brands crossing my imaginary threshold, just like everything else, prices are going up, and in the end, the consumer, you guys, will make up your own mind on what is worth it or not. So, this watch is $590 and has a Seiko NH35. As you can see on the screen, this is another 40 millimeter watch, as does seem to be the trend these days with smaller watches being done by many micro brands. It seems that's what many customers want and I understand micros needing to capitalize on that. The case design and overall case shape could be described as Tudor or Rolex inspired, especially vintage pieces, but the large distinct screw down crown, dial layout, and that ceramic insert keep it pretty distinct. And I can't really think of a watch that this would be you know, really an homage to, though similar watches have been and are being produced by other micros, such as Trasca as one example. Now, two other colors are available. These are offered both with the day date and no date options, and the no date uses the NH38, which means no phantom date wheel. But I had to choose the day date to review because how often do you see color match date wheels, especially when it comes to colors like this green dial? I love this shade of green and I have done my best to truly capture it here on video and in photography in the written article, but it's not exactly an olive green, not a military green, but a lighter shade, something like the shade 
of a plant or tree leaves or a green apple. Whatever it is called, I love it. Now, if you do look closely, though, you will see the date wheel does not exactly match the date color, or excuse me, the dial color. I initially thought they just didn't get the tones to match, but looking closer, I believe the difference is just because the dial is textured and the date wheel is not, which does give it an off appearance, but nothing that I find, you know, really distracting. Now, another thing I love about this dial is the use of all Arabic numerals. I don't know why, I just love it on watches, though I admit it doesn't work on every watch, but it certainly does here, and I think the word vintage is definitely overused at this point, so let's just say it has classic vibes. The case is top brushed, as is the bezel and bracelet, with high polishing on the sides of the case and bracelet, but when you look again, you notice the case sides are not completely polished, as the lower fourth of the dial has a satin brushed bevel, which definitely adds some uniqueness, and because Steve is not only a watch guy himself, but also a strap guy, we have drilled lugs on the airfield, yet this bracelet does have quick-release bars, but more on that in a few. The crown, I believe, is intended to look like a jet turbine, and if I'm wrong on that, I'm sure someone will correct me, uh, correct me. But the finishing is intricate, and I love the aesthetic. But more importantly, the crown is easy to grip, even with large hands, and it has a nice, solid feel to it. The bracelet is a somewhat standard oyster link, but solid as well. The finishing really matches the case nicely, and it tapers from 20 millimeters to 16 millimeters at the clasp. Like I said, this bracelet has quick-release bars, and I'm not the biggest fan of these, but I will say the prongs on these do feel pretty solid, and the end links do fit to the case. Uh, the end link fit to the case is pretty much perfect. Screws are used for the links, and the clasp is again standard fare, but functional, and it's slim, and it fits nice and flat against the wrist. Speaking of fit, this watch was not sized at all, and as you can see, I'm not sure if I would have to remove a link really, as it fits me really well. Maybe just move the pin and the clasp up a few. But what that means is if you have a wrist larger than mine, which for those paying attention is seven and a half inches, you may need to request some extra links if you decide to purchase one. X1 Blue Loom has been used on all colors. And as you could imagine, this is a torchy little watch. It lights up quickly and with most printed loom, I find it to hold that charge for a good four to five hours before fading, but I think that it's a pretty good one considering the surface area. One thing to note, the black and green models have the Arabic numerals loomed, but the white dial does not, with only the outer marks on the ceramic insert being loomed. So as always, it always comes down to, is it all worth it? Well, as I always say, I'm not here to sell you a watch, but my opinion is, yeah, I mean, the price is higher than I like for this movement, but it's far from the only brand and watch that is doing it, so it is what it is. At least it's not the William Wood at almost $1,000. Personally, I would love this watch a little more at 42 millimeters, but I love the green color and that yellow secondhand. And doing this review and looking at the white and black dials, I have to say, I truly feel there is not a bad choice when it comes to colors. I'll have those perfect accent colors and they're just so clean and stark, they just all pop. It's also a brand that, as I said at the start of this video, has been around for a long time and not only are they designing their watches, but you also get great support if you ever need it. Steve is truly one of the nicest guys in the business and I'm glad he's still producing new watches each year. As I said, I like this piece. It's not a dive watch. It's, it's something different. It's a nice take on a field and air, you know, or excuse me, field and pilot watch. And uh, even though it's 40 millimeters, it's just a really, really nice clean uh, piece. And uh, beyond the movement, yeah, it's a Seiko NH35. And I know they're, you know, relatively cheap and easily replaceable movements and not the most accurate all the time either, unless you get it really regulated. But uh, this is a really nice looking watch and kind of hard for me to just, you know, overlook because of the movement. So as always, I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this Raven Airfield and if you have any questions. All of our links will be in the description, including a link to the written article and the Raven website. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and tap that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.